Guillermo del Toro is an incredibly talented filmmaker. Not only can he put together movies that are just overall entertaining, he can make them thought-provoking and meaningful without feeling too heavy-handed or pushy in any sense. However, his next project, Pinocchio, a Netflix original, a passion project of his, looks to be his most successful yet, with a bunch of stuff going into it that I just love. My name's Mr. Cow, and today we're going to be going over why Pinocchio is a big deal. Like I said before, this movie has been a passion project of Guillermo del Toro's. He said that this is the movie he's wanted to make for nearly all his life. Pinocchio was a big part of his childhood, I'm guessing. Not only is it a passion project, though, there are a ton of other incredibly talented people working on this movie. Like Mark Gustafsson. You may know him from the PJs? The Eddie Murphy Claymation Show? Or Claymation Easter? Huh. Well, it's kind of obvious why this guy is a co-director on the movie. Guillermo del Toro, at least I think, hasn't ever dealt with claymation before, which is the style the movie is going to take place in. So having someone like Mark Gustafsson, even though he's never worked on anything incredibly cool, although he has a primetime Emmy, I've never really liked any of his works that he's directed. Still, the guy knows about claymation, and if you can have a co-director that's all about claymation and a co-director that's all about story, I think you have something really good in the works. But let's get in the story. Who's writing this movie? Well, of course, you have Carlo Collati, who made the original novel. Then, of course, Gris Grimley, who did a, you know, grim kind of story with Pinocchio. Then Matthew Robbins, Guillermo del Toro, and one of my personal favorite writers of all time, Patrick McHale, the writer of shows like Adventure Time, Over the Garden Wall, Flapjack, just this crazy kind of surreal type writing that I love so much. Over the Garden Wall may very well be one of my favorite TV shows of all time. As for Matthew Robbins, the other writer on it, even though there's like eight writers on it, he's worked on movies like Battery Is Not Included and Dragon Slayer and Mimic, which were, you know, 80s and 90s movies, which were... You know, they're fine, but uh, we'll, we'll see what he has to add to the story. I'm not 100% sold on Matthew Robbins quite yet, but Guillermo del Toro, Project Mihail, Gris, Gris Grimley, I guess is how you say that, Grace Grimley, uh, I, don't, I don't fucking know. It's a really interesting team behind this movie. As for voice actors and stuff like that, we're not 100% sure, but there is another big piece of talent behind this movie. The Jim Henson Company. That's right, my all-time favorite company, my all-time favorite production team, Jim Henson's very own team. The same people who brought us The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance this year, which very well may be the greatest TV show I've seen since Over the Garden Wall came out. It blew my mind. The puppetry was incredible. Everything about it was incredible. If you haven't seen or heard anything about it, check out this video all about it. I go in-depth on it, and I'm probably going to go more in depth later. The Jim Henson Company is incredible. They have revolutionized the way people look at puppetry, animation, stop motion, everything. They are insanely talented people there, and they have put so much care and love into their products, no matter what it is. And just knowing that the Jim Henson Company is somewhat attached to this movie sells me on it. But this movie is definitely going to be adult themed. Now that we have these Disney remakes coming out that are super family-friendly copy-pastes of the original movies from the 90s, it'll be really cool to see a new take on one of those movies, or at least one of those storylines, because it's a fairy tale. A lot of people can use this. In fact, there's another movie called Pinocchio in Italy being filmed right now that I think is releasing in 2019. So who knows if that one will steal some of the thunder? I very much doubt it, though. I think Guillermo del Toro is going to steal the show on that one, but who knows? Maybe we'll be talking about 2019's Pinocchio from Italy later on in the year. You never know. Pinocchio has passion written all over it. There are people working on this movie that have done some incredible things, and I think that with Guillermo del Toro as the driving force, this could be huge. And a lot of the designs are going to be based off of Gris Grimley's design, which will be really interesting because Gris Grimley has put together some crazy stuff in the past. On top of that, his Pinocchio is both creepy and adorable at the same time. And all of the characters he's we've we've seen so far of this kind of first look look unique, interesting and in a claymation style in the stop motion style, I think it could be not only kind of unnerving 
but incredibly detailed as well. There's something about having non-human actors that can add a lot of humanity to your movies. I know that doesn't sound quite right, but it adds this disconnect from everything we've seen before. You don't see stop motion things moving around in real life, but when they do come to life, you get this kind of human sense from them without having to look at actual people. It's bizarre, but it totally works. And if it didn't work, the Jim Henson Company probably would have went out of business a long time ago. This style definitely works, and I think it's a fantastic choice for Pinocchio. Now, this movie is slated for a 2021 release date and is listed as animation, fantasy, and musical, which will also be interesting to see because you've seen the designs of these characters, you know stop motion, you know movies like Nightmare Before Christmas with that, you know, this is Halloween, fucking awesome sequences like that. I think that Pinocchio could be another unsettling thing like that, but with a much deeper meaning underneath it. I'm overall just ecstatic about the possibility of this movie coming out. I'm so pumped. It's making me keep my Netflix subscription. That's how good this is. I've seen Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance twice, BoJack Horseman maybe a thousand times. I'm rewatching a lot of stuff just, you know, kind of to keep myself busy well, until the new stuff comes out. And there is a lot of good stuff on Netflix, but I think Pinocchio could be a big pull. And let's talk about, before we end off this video, let's talk about the Oscars real quick. Because people, when it comes to Netflix, I think Spielberg was the one who said that Netflix movies just should not be even slightly considered for the Oscars, mostly because they're not a cinematic experience. They're, you know, they're movies, they're films, but you don't experience them in a cinema. I don't know how I feel about that. While I do get it, I just saw Ad Astra in an empty theater, which was an incredibly amazing experience with all the surround sound. But there are people who have setups like that in their own home, and if they can watch this movie on Netflix like that, or whether it's on their phone, I don't think it matters, so long as it's a fantastic movie. I do get where Spielberg is coming from, if he's the one that said that quote. I'm gonna have to... This part will not be in the video if Spielberg did not say that, so it's not gonna matter. But I think that Pinocchio could have a major shot at best animated picture. If we look at 2021's release schedule for animated movies, the only three animated movies currently listed for 2021, which is a little ways out, we, I don't think we have any Pixar information or DreamWorks information, although we do have The Boss Baby 2, Space Jam 2, and Foster. And Foster is definitely the standout of the three, for sure. It's the first female-directed uh, I think Blue Sky animated picture about a young avid reader is transported into the mystical world of his favorite a of his favorite A series of fantasy books. Jesus Christ, who's the quality control on this goddamn IMDb page? I'm no longer sold on Foster. I no longer am. I think that Pinocchio will have a clear shot at it. Although Foster does seem kind of interesting, but when you misspell the summary or even just the tease at your movie, you're gonna, you know, take it down a little bit. Like, you know, doing a review on Joker and mispronouncing Joaquin Phoenix. I did that, and I need to stop bringing it up on these videos, because I need to just let it go at this point, but I'm super embarrassed about it. With that all said, it seems like Pinocchio is going to be an enormous deal, and could change the way we look at Netflix movies for a very long time. There's a bunch of incredibly talented people behind it, and I cannot wait to see just a little bit more about it, especially with the Jim Henson company behind it. My God. They have proved themselves as artists, like, since 1982, all right? They've, they've been doing this a while. I think this movie is going to be incredible. So thank you very much for watching. We're getting very close to our goal of 1,000 subscribers for 2019. So if you like what you saw here today and you want to keep up to date on these kind of movie news videos or even just Pinocchio in general, I'll certainly be following it very closely. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You won't regret it, and I will be very grateful, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.